In this video, we are going to show the data flow diagrams and uh, talk about the differences between a context diagram, a level zero, and a level one. Data flow diagrams uh, usually are a set that start at a very high level and then increase in detail. So the one that is the highest level is a, called a context diagram. Then we start drilling down into more detail with each of the lower levels um, until we get to the appropriate level needed for the documentation. For purposes of this class, we're going to stop at a level one. So this is showing a context diagram. A couple things that you will note on a context diagram. First, there is only one circle. So here we have, a, it's called process payroll. So we only have one transformation process that describes the entire process. This is why it's very high level. You'll also know there's no numbers in the context diagram circles, as you saw in the previous ones. So context diagram, since it only has the one circle, we aren't going to put any number. Now just to note, uh, in some textbooks you would see this labeled zero or 0, 0.0, so there is some small differences between textbooks. Then we have two data sources on the left. You can see departments, so the individual departments are sending in time cards in this case. And the Human Resources Department is sending in new employee information, so employees have a form when they join, or employee change forms. So this is, for example, change in withholding or change in pay rates, for, as a couple examples. And then we have four data destinations. We have a tax report and payment going to the government agencies, so this could be withholding tax at a federal level, a state level, uh, unemployment tax, your FICA tax, all of those, so these are going to the various government agencies. We have the employee checks or direct deposits going to you know, the pay stubs going to the employees. We have a payroll check going to the bank. And this is to denote, denote that a payroll check is uh, going to the payroll account. So basically, every time a company pays payroll, they have it come out of a separate account from all the rest of their business. At the end of the payroll period, they write a check for the total of all payroll checks that should be cleared and send it to the bank. Once all the payroll checks are cashed, the balance in that account should be zero. And then we have payroll reports going to the management. Now one thing to keep in mind, we need to keep remember that there are two data sources and four data destinations. When we create our next level of diagram, we don't want to lose anybody and we don't want to add anything. All right, so with level zero, we can see that we've added more transformation circles. We can also see now that we have added data stores, which are not in the context diagram, and our transformation processes are now numbered. So one thing to check, we still have our two data sources, human resources and departments. We have our four data destinations, employees, the bank, government agencies, and management, they all stay there. So the first big difference is that we take the one circle, the one process that was on the context diagram, and now we break it into multiple steps. In this case, five steps to process payroll. So we have step one is to update the payroll file. Now notice these are still pretty high level uh, processes. Second, we pay the employees. Third, we prepare the reports. Next, we pay the taxes. And finally, we update the general ledger. Notice that all the data flows that were coming in between data, um, 
data stores, or I'm sorry, data sources or data destinations are still there. And we are sending information between the processes when appropriate. For example, here between four to five. Now, numbering should occur in the order that they are performed. So definitely you need to update the payroll file before you pay employees. Now, in many companies, these last three steps could be in a different order, for example, or maybe they happen at the same time. So I've mentioned before, we have now two data stores, the employee payroll file and the general ledger. Just a note about the numbering. We call this a level zero. First of all, I think a way to remember that is all the numbering is 1.0, 2.0, etc., which you'll notice that will change on the next diagram. So we next go to a level one, and basically a level one will take just one of these processes or circles and break it down further. So in this case, we took process 2.0, if you go back, which was pay employees, and we are breaking that down to two more steps. So we still have the incoming departments, one data source, and two data destinations, employee and bank. And if we look back here on the level zero, we had one source to that process and two destinations. One thing that did get added um, is another data store with the tax rates. Now this can is legitimate to add a data store, but you shouldn't be adding any other elements besides expanding the number of processes. The number of sources and destinations that point to that process should remain the same. And this dis uh, payroll cash disbursement voucher is what would go to the step 3.0 from the previous slide. All right, just a few guidelines uh, for drawing the data flow diagrams. First, try to understand the system as much as possible before diagramming it. That way you're able to get complete information. Now, sometimes you actually use these diagrams to be able to help gather more information and get a better understanding, so it could be a little bit of an iterative process. I recommend starting with the context diagram first and then going successfully in greater detail at, with each, uh, each one consecutively. Design these to read from top to bottom and left to right as much as possible. Now, one of the things you want to avoid is arrows going all over the place. So try to make it as practical as can. You can move things around if needed. You shouldn't have more than five, maybe seven. I would say five is really about the max that you want to have for number of processes in each one. The fewer, the better it is to understand. Number each of the processes sequentially, especially if there is a particular order to them. Make sure you have labeled and identified all data sources and destinations, all of your processes and data stores. Now in the data flows, you should label all of them except for those that go in and out of the data store. And the last rule to keep in mind, every process should have at least one incoming data flow and one outgoing data flow. And that could come, be, come in from a data source or another process and one outgoing destination or another process. So that is where we are going to end today in this in this video. Thanks for watching.